A distinctive feature of the Loddon Shire is that there are no major cities, just a collection of small villages. The Shire is primarily agricultural with plenty of wildlife. Its main river is the life-giving Loddon, which also supplies irrigation for crops and livestock. On the first day of our journey, we'll see the Lanakuri Weir, which dams the Loddon River, providing valuable water storage and flood control. Then we move on to Tarnagulla, a quaint little village born on the energetic gold rushes of the 1850s. One of the oldest buildings in town is the Victoria Hotel and the adjacent Victorian Theatre. The mural on the stage reflects the town's history, also captured with 19th century photos. A new community centre will be our first refreshment stop. Then we'll show you a delightful B&B, Rostrata, owned and operated by Colin and Dorothy Silk on their farm property. It's the original homestead comfortably appointed and has nostalgic features like bedrooms ideal for a group of family or friends. Well-made pathways at our next stop, the Melville Caves and the nearby Kuyura State Park, take you to some stunning views over the countryside. We finish the day by settling in at the Wedderburn Gold Seekers Motel. On day two, we'll look at two interesting towns. The first is Bort, the central feature of which is Lake Bort, a man-made body of water which transforms this otherwise arid area into fertile farmland and a haven for bird life. It also provides a great venue for Lake Bort's caravan park. Bort's an attractive little town with some historic buildings well cared for by the community. Close to the heart of town is a traveller's chair, which on closer inspection you'll see is made from spanners, ingeniously shaped and welded together by John Pickley, who lives nearby. From his spanner collection, which now number in the thousands, he created a new art form which has brought him national and international fame. John will take you on a tour of the farm where you'll find his wonderful work on display. And goodness knows how he finds the time, but John is also internationally known as a breeder of rare South American macaws. John Pickley is simply inspirational. Not far away is another bought success story, the businesses Simply Tomatoes and Aussie Wool Quilts, where you can meet Marilyn Lanyon, who explains how a great Australian product is made here with local materials. Quilts and pillows, which now adorn thousands of beds in Australia. Another enterprise which is thriving is Simply Tomatoes, packaged olives and green tomatoes grown on the Lanyon family farm. There are other green tomato products and visitors can see the high standards set in the production process. There'll be time to take a break and sample those products in a gift pack. Another fascinating business in Bort is Salute Oliver a well-established olive grove where Peter and Marley's Ica are turning out excellent products in a competitive market and Salute is ranked among the best. Not only do they sell different varieties of olives, they have broadened their range to include other interesting foods more common in days gone by. But olive oil and casks set Salute apart from others. Casks are air and light proof, so when packaged the olive oil stays fresher longer. If you value top quality olives and really pure olive oil, Salute is the place for you. And another bought business which will surprise you is at Krasi Wines, made by George Tallis. George produces a good range of red and white wines and they are gaining recognition for their quality. In the afternoon we'll be heading to another lot in Shire town, Pyramid Hill, so named by explorer Major Mitchell for obvious reasons. Pyramid Hill is a small community but is very proud of its Historical Society Museum where a lot of the town's history has been preserved. You could spend hours browsing through a huge collection of memorabilia which not only reveal Pyramid Hill's history but gives a great insight into what Australians from previous generations needed to survive in the outback. Day three sees us exploring Wedderburn, founded in the gold rush but when the gold ran out, another local business became important, eucalyptus oil production. And in the Hard Hill Reserve, you'll see an old stew pot fired up to produce the yuki oil, which you can take away. The whole process is demonstrated, showing how the special variety of eucalyptus is sustainably harvested and then put in the stew pot to extract the oil, which is reputed to have many medical benefits. 
Wedderburn is still regarded as a place for fruitful gold prospecting to this day. Steve Colbert demonstrates how modern detectors are still unearthing valuable nuggets in riverbeds and just below the surface. Also in Wedderburn, you'll see Ross Curry in Cuzzy's studio, where he produces art in a remarkable way by burning patterns and images into local timber. The results are fascinatingly beautiful and Cuzzy's art makes great souvenirs or gifts to friends and family. The Coach House Gallery in Wedderburn's Main Street is also a treasure trove, featuring local artists, photographers and jewellery makers and woodcrafts of all kinds. You can buy a souvenir here or wander next door to the Wedderburn Museum where you'll see what must be one of the best and most authentic country general stores you'll ever see. The goods on display will bring back memories and downstairs, the town's original hot lead printing press and images from the gold rush days. And hidden away, a wonderful selection of old clay pots. In the stable, horse-drawn wagons and buggies and a blacksmith's forge which kept all these vehicles on the country roads. And what a great way to finish the day, back at the Wedderburn Motel, listening to the famous Wedderburn Old Timers Orchestra playing those good old melodies you don't hear that often nowadays. Inglewood is a country town with charming shop fronts and historic buildings. It has a gold mining history and the local community erected a gold memorial to remember this. One of its main attractions is the Blue Yuki Museum just north of the town. It's a good place to take a break and learn more about Eucalyptus Oil's place in Inglewood's history and how the Blue Yuki, native to this region, was so important to oil production. You can see the Blue Yuki's growing on the property and the prominent remains of the original production plant which served the town for several generations. But inside the museum, there are regular demonstrations of the Yuki oil process, from putting leaves into the boiler to the separation by distillation of oil from the steam generated in the cooking process. In Inglewood's main street is Fusspot's antique and bric-a-brac shop in a former bank building. Catherine and Barry Norman run a terrific little business jam-packed with all sorts of mouth-watering memorabilia. And further along the main street in the old Pelican Hotel is the Dolls Nursery, where Cheryl Rogers has amassed an absolutely amazing collection of dolls, old and new, of every type you can think of, and her collection is still growing. In Inglewood's courthouse, you'll see reenacted cases from the courthouse records from the days of Queen Victoria. There's a judge, an accused, a victim complaining of assault, a prosecutor, exhibits, and of course, a verdict. I hereby sentence you to 10 years hard labor. The local Masonic Lodge is another interesting place. The inside of the lodge is incredible. It took two men more than a year to complete, and now Masons and visitors alike come and shake their heads in wonder. At Bridgewater on Loddon, the railway bridge displays a mosaic a unique way for the town to record its history and environment. And further downstream is the old swimming hole, always popular with the locals ever since the town was founded. Also in Bridgewater is Billy Brook's specialty shop. Here you'll find a great selection of goods aimed at the specialty buyer. And any purchases will be gift wrapped for you. The final stop in our journey is Mulwari Studio, where you can watch Roberta Foster creating landscape paintings and her partner, Robert Scholes, a respected landscape photographer's images captured in his camera. Together, they have filled the gallery with their work and other local crafts, all of which are really attractive. This is just a glimpse of what you can see in the Loddon Shire. It is a different part of Australia, which shows how diverse this country is and how inspiring and interesting are the people who love living here. People who will make you more than welcome.